Today is officially engine pull day. And welcome to today's video. As much as it pains me to have to say this, but yes, we are pulling engine out of the S15 today, the pink S15, RAM. We gotta get, we gotta get this. This is RAM, the blue one is RAM, number one waifu. And um, we gotta do something. Amelia? I mean, that's not my car, but maybe in the future? I don't know, that'd be cool. Well, what's this red thing then? And then the Evo. And the Evo is literally a parts car. Oh, oh, don't look there, don't look there. There's parts you can't see yet there for the 32. Anyways, guys, we're pulling the engine out of the S15 and I have some friends and help coming. And before they get here, I'm gonna get her head start. I'm gonna pull uh, all the little tiny stuff off. We're gonna get the shifter off. I'm gonna drain all the fluids and everything, get everything set up and ready so that all we have to do is pull the trans, pull the engine out. And then, uh, I don't know, we'll see how time goes. Maybe we'll be able to start diving into it, but I think I'm gonna make that an entirely separate video where we start you know, breaking down the engine and finding exactly what was wrong with it. Um, but for now, let's get this motor out of the S15 and then fix it, put it all back in so that we can show you how good the SR20 really is. And I wanna say something that's kind of not only gonna encourage me, but also encourage you guys. And that is sometimes for you to get 100% of the way like to your goals or aspirations or all that kind of stuff. Sometimes you have to stop at 98, 99% and go all the way back down to five or 10% to fix something to then get you that last little bit to 100% to live that goal, to live that dream, to live that vision. So this is what this is for me. I'm gonna keep telling myself that as we pull it all down because imagine if this happened while I was at a competition, smashing it around Nico at 7,500 RPM or 8,000 RPM and that leg go, boom, gone, whole thing. You know what I mean? The fact that we were able to catch it this early and issue with the guy, the chain guides and all that kind of stuff, it saved our engine. So trying to look at it from the bright side. And uh, with that, I'm gonna get started on this and wait for the friends to arrive. Ladies and gentlemen, the Calvary has arrived in all of its mustache glory. It's beautiful, isn't it? It is very beautiful. It's been a while since we've uh, had this lovely guest on the channel. Yeah. He's back, he's back from his hiatus. Yeah. I don't really know what happened. I think I was the one that left Japan and you you didn't go anywhere. No, you did go to the States, yeah, right? I went to the States, yeah. yeah. I did like a crazy road trip going up from uh, Vegas up to Alaska. That's cool. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. A lot of fun, but uh, we're gonna be driving again in Mitsuri coming up at the end of this month. Sorry. Hopefully we'll have this thing fixed by then. You wanna drive this thing there? I mean, I got a truck now, so if the chase is up there, I might as well bring this for shakedown and stuff and the fun, Why not? right? Anyway, so we're gonna get back to it. We have made a bunch of progress. I'm sure you would have seen from all the clips we added in, um, but pretty much we're just gonna get the hot side off. Um, then it's like just tail shaft trans stuff and then motor comes out. Uh, we obviously need to take the hood off and stuff to make life easier, but I've pretty much disconnected everything. There's a few more like wiring harness things I gotta do on the alternator and the starter, but that's it. And then we're ready to pull it out. It's a sad day, but a good day. I don't even know what's wrong with it, to be honest. It's knocking. Oh, shit.
going to yeah, slide her off now. Oh yeah, she's already sliding right out. <laughs> yeah, it should have like two dowel pins, right? Yeah. Wait, I don't know because this is a... Here she comes. There it is, it's out. That's it. <laughs> How is... I love... I love it when stuff just works. I've never seen CD09 just come out that easy. Yeah, well this is like... Yeah. I guess with the Mazworks. Yeah, when you got a mat, the Mazwex uh, housing kit is like perfect. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, perfect, perfect. And then we can just. Yeah, you let it go. Let and then I'll lift there. it up. You can lift the uh, jack. Yep. Slide her out. Yep. Slowly, easy does it. Nice. nice. All right. Easy. Too easy, eh? Well, we got the CD09 off, and that went way smoother than I was anticipating. And now it's time to pull the motor. So, pretty much from here, we're gonna take the hood off, we're gonna get the crane into position, and then um, strap her in and pull her out. This went pretty smooth. Were you expecting it to go worse? Honestly, not really, no. No, you happy? Pretty happy with this. Walter's a man of uh, <laughs> very few words. Many words, sorry, many words. <laughs> so yeah. Let's see Lucy from here, so. Yeah, no, we should have this thing out. Like, I, I keep keep wondering, like, am I forgetting anything? I should probably take the hood off. Yeah, no, we're definitely doing that right now. Um, but yeah, things are going together quite smooth. Like it took some material off of this. Yeah. Like, I don't know how much further you have yeah. until you go in. You might I'll replace that, that out. I've got some looking at spares, that's not a problem. Yeah. It's just an upper oil panel. Yeah, or so. those are nothing. So, this is my exhaust side engine mount. Look at this. It just broke straight off. And that's partially because of all the heat from all of that. It's just got super soft and ripped itself out. So, we're definitely going to be putting a uh, heat shield to cover and protect this mount. This side's a little damaged too, because obviously when that mount broke and all the clutch kicks and stuff, it just kind of tweaked this one too. This is all like starting to come out too. Everything looks really good on the clutch. We've got even wear by looks of it on the pilot bearing. The import shaft didn't show any uneven wear as well, which is really good. One thing you've got to make sure, especially with like a lot of different trans options for the SR, and we have seen this before at Yashia Factory, Okachan warned me to check this as well is that if the import shaft at all is misaligned and you have uneven wear on your pilot bearing, that will actually cause you to you know, get a spun bearing ultimately because things aren't balanced and it puts pressure on the crank in a weird way is what he told me. So that all looks fine, so I'm confident in that. And I think that's really only an issue with um, transmissions that they cut and weld the bell housings on because if that alignment is wrong in the slightest, you're gonna have problems, right? Um, but yeah, for the most part, everything looks good. It definitely sketches me out about the engine rubbing on the rack. I'm glad we found that. Um, but also just all the stuff on the fire extinguisher there, I'm glad that we pulled the engine in the end because like you can see it even seeped through into here, into the bell housing, started rusting on the, on the flywheel a little bit there. So I'm just glad we managed to pull this all off. So yeah, <sighs> let's put this thing on the tire. Let's call it here. Let's go eat dinner. I'm just, I mean, we do this in record time though. I'm pretty proud. Like, we got the CD09 out really fast too. Thank you, Walter. Hey, no problem. <laughs> no worries. Appreciate your help. Well, today's mission is accomplished. Engine removed from the S15. Trans removed from the S15. Um, a little thing happened and um, there's a lot of tranny fluid everywhere now. For some reason we thought it would be a great idea to lift it out of here and well, the plug fell out of the back while we were there and 
We made a huge mess and Khan's now cleaning it up. Thank you, Khan. You're welcome. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> also, a massive thank you to Walter for his help today. We got a lot done. We got this thing smashed out in no time. Engine out now. The next thing is going to be stripping it down and trying to figure out what's wrong and what's going on. But we'll do that when my new engine stand arrives because I didn't want to take the Evo engine off the stand because that's just annoying. So you can never have enough engine stands, in my opinion. Right? Don't make me replace you with an LS. You listening to me? You listening to me? Don't make me consider an LS over you, okay? Do right by me. Would have been the perfect time for it to just start leaking a little bit. Or just fluid. fall on the ground. Yeah, just like. Yeah. <laughs> it's the next day. Yesterday, we pulled. Not a V8 out of my S15, the mighty SR20. God's holy engine. Blessed upon us. Um, not to be mistaken with the RB30, that's another one of his engines. There were a holy trinity, the 2JZ, the RB30, and the SR20. Everything else is trash. Um, Toyota 4AG boys are crying right now. <laughs> There's no other word for trinity after trinity. The quadri, I don't know. Anyways, don't hate me for that, all right? In my opinion, 2JZ, RV30, well, not in any Pacific order, specific order, okay? Pacific, did I say Pacific? <laughs> not in any specific order, one's not better than the other, there was the Holy Trinity, they all are one and equal, the 2JZ, the RV30, and the SR20. Notice that there's only two, engine, two Nissan engines in that? Yeah, that's right. All right, enough snack talk. Um, I need to get this on an engine stand. We got a bunch of new gear uh, that we picked up as well that Khan put together for me. Um, so, you have, so if this falls and drops my engine, I'm coming for you, alright? <laughs> no. Um, we've got like this really nice little bench now. You can see I've already put the clutch there and stuff. And it's got like all these little cool things here. Not sponsored whatsoever, it's just like I needed this basic stuff. We've got ourselves a little, a little push cart thing too. So like, you know, we're just getting some new shop gears and tools and stuff to, so that we can make life easier when pulling apart cars. Because one thing that's really, really frustrating is when you pull apart a car and everything's everywhere and you have no idea where's what and what, what. Now I've put this thing together so many times now that I kind of can just like look at a bolt and be like, yeah, this is the bolt kit that Mazwork sent me for the transmission uh, bell housing bolting kit. So I know that that's that and yeah, we're all good. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna put the engine, take the flywheel and all that off. It's gonna go on the engine stand, then I'm gonna start pulling everything down. I'm gonna to get to the bottom of what's going on. A lot of talking right now, but that's okay. We're getting back into some wrenching. QB. Blows my mind. How, how long have we been doing this now for Khan? 45 minutes. If that, and I've been taking my time, chilling, having phone conversations and meetings and stuff like while I'm doing it. So, not a super big rush. By the way, I am loving our carts right now. So seriously, the best thing we ever did. Like everything's all organized, all nuts and bolts kept everywhere. Super good, hyped. Now, next thing I want to do, is I want to take the oil pan off and see what's in it. Now we could have done this, 
while it was on the car. But I didn't because I knew I was gonna have to take it out anyway, so there's no point, you know. So remember Sam, lefty loosey, righty tidy. Last time I did this, I covered my friend with the camera in oil and it fell everywhere. Ooh, oh my God. If I put a couple of the bolts back in, when it breaks free, it won't fall everywhere. Ah, using your brain. Oh, oh, it's there. So excited to look inside my, uh, my first engine build. See how much I screwed up. Although we're not sure that it's me that screwed up. Sometimes crap just happens and it's out of your control. What do they say in the USA? What's like their favorite line con? It is what it is. <laughs> well, there's still a lot of oil in here. We drained this so much though. Huh. Okay, well we didn't make a mess guys. We did the little trick. I feel smart. Um, dude, nothing is in the pickup. Pickup looks beautiful. Holy crap, the engine looks amazing. I don't see anything. Nothing is in the pickup. It looks beautifully clean. <laughs> hmm. That is the best tasting engine oil I have ever put in my mouth. It just tastes like I put olive oil in my mouth right there. Doesn't taste like bearing material. I know what that tastes like because Chris Rodnick's uh, RB26 had Rodnock. I, I, I really don't think we have Rodnock. I don't see like bearing material anywhere or anything. I'm gonna quickly just zap this off real quick. A little zip zip. I'm gonna get a better look in there. Oh my gosh. Everything looks so nice and clean. I don't see any discoloration on the rods where the crank and the bearing and everything is. It looks like I, like, I mean, I put my tongue on that. Like, it looks as good as it tastes. It looks clean. I'm so freaking confused right now. But this bottom end looks like cherry. I'm gonna go wash my mouth out with some Gamer Sups. Also, if you're wondering why I use Gamer Sups, link down in the description. Go check out that unlisted secret video and you'll know more. One really good thing is when I rebuilt the engine at Yashio, I stamped and numbered each individual cam cap. So even if these did get mixed up, I can still identify each and every one. Nice little HKS cam shafts. What do you want? I'm balls deep in my engine. Do, do. Time to take all the shim guard things out. And looking at everything. We'll leave the lifters in there for now, but just gonna make sure everything's tapped in there. Every rocker is marked too. There's a little dot on here for number one for the uh, intake side. And then what I do is I put my two locator shims under it, and then I put the rocker. I put the rocker on top of them and push it over the top. So that way each locator shim and everything is in there and they don't get mixed up. Another good trick to help keep everything together is you can store the rocker upside down like this and take your two locator shims off. A little bit harder with the magnet there and you can sit it in the recess here. It's like a little kind of like container to hold them. It's kind of like missing you. What I'm doing there. It's like a little container, but I like to keep them flipped the other way. So I put them in here, let them keep them under it, slide it forward. It's now time to take the head off. Fingers crossed. Everything goes the way I want it to. This chain can be a little bit tricky, but if I grab the head and lift up, I can kind of flick it to the side like that. Oh yeah! And you can see that head here like that. 
Look at that. It doesn't sink down there or anything. All right. Dude, the pistons look epic. Oh, you can see like scratch marks when I was doing the screwdriver test. But, yeah, okay. Pistons look really good. Head gasket looks really good. Like the pistons look really nice. I don't see any signs of detonation in the edges. Um, they all look great. Bores look good on these two ones. I can't see these ones just yet. Everything looks really nice. Actually, like, really nice. Let's have a look at the head real quick. Let's flip the head. Have a quick look at that. Yo, we were on the money. We're good. Usually you'd see, like, detonation here. It all looks... Really nice, actually. Um, pass me a bit of that blue cloth real quick. Yeah, we're looking really nice. No pitting or anything. Uh, looks really nice. So what I'm doing is just shining a bunch of light to see if anything creeps through on the intake site here for the valves. I don't think it's gonna, I don't think we've got a burnt valve and the leak down didn't show anything, but this just, Will show me. See no light creeping through on the intake side. Now let's check the exhaust side. This is always a big thing on SRs. The exhaust side always gets like the most beaten up. So far, nothing. No, we're good. There's no light coming through whatsoever. That's really good. That's a good sign. I'm just thinking about this. I know that this is meant to go this way a lot. I don't think it's meant to go side to side like this a lot. Start to find out some answers now. Upper oil pan is coming off. That was like the easiest upper oil pan I've ever taken off. Damn. It looks so good in there. Everything. Yeah, I don't see any material or anything. Look clean, looks epic. Looks amazing. Um, for now I'm just gonna check out there. Um, yeah, you know, usual bit of play. That's fine side to side. It's, up and down, that's the worry one. That's just the casting mark. The chain wasn't hitting it. Everything looks amazing in here. That's just casting marks. So the bore scope was wrong. Hmm. And the guides look fine. I don't see anything wrong with the guides. Like that does look like it's a bit loose this way, but. Huh. Yeah, I just don't see anything else wrong. I mean, we may have caught this in its early stages. Like I see no discoloration in any of the rods or pistons. They've all got the usual side to side motion, which is good. I mean, may, maybe it is just like something in the head. Maybe it is just a lift up. Like, I'm at the point now where I'm like, what is going on? So we've already like filmed a couple clips of me pretty much giving up because I didn't find anything wrong. And well, I didn't end up going home. I ended up digging into it more. We had Alcachon on FaceTime and we went over everything. We went through every rod bearing, every main bearing. We checked the thrust washers. Um, there was a little bit of crank like walk and play, but that disappears when you have the pulley and everything and all the oil, all the oil pump and the rear seal and, all and everything on there. So <sighs> we can't find anything wrong is what we're trying to say. We found a few little things with like the chain guide and stuff, like when the chain guide was, you know, in there, this one has a lot of play and, and maybe that was tapping against the side of the block. Um, we found a bunch of stuff, but regardless, we are so deep into this now. We're going to rebuild the whole motor. We're going to go over everything with a fine tooth comb. Me and Oka trying to go and do, do it again together. We're going to check everything in the head and make sure everything's good there as well. And yeah, I kind of jokingly said to him, well, if we're rebuilding the motor, should we just go to a 2.2? And he kind of was like, I've got one sitting here. So... <laughs> I don't know. We'll see what we're going to do. I really want to try and, and, and mess around with the 2 liter. I love the 2 liter platform. How this thing felt with the G25 550 at a 2 liter platform felt way more insane than a 2.2 that I've driven any, any of Okachan's 2.2s. So 
Um, I can't imagine what like a G25 660 with like a bigger housing on a 2.2 would feel like. That would be insane. But for now, I really want to mess around with the two liter platform. Um, but yeah, like we went through every bearing. Everything looks amazing. Um, thrust washers look amazing. So that proves the point that the crank walk's not a problem. Um, we're stumped. We're, we're stumped. Like, it's so frustrating, but at the end of the day, this is cars, and it's just gonna lead to me being able to spend some more awesome time with Okachan learning from him. So, at the end of the day, that's that. It's more content, um, and maybe we get to learn more things together. So the only thing that we've found that could potentially be it, and I've just done that finger tight, but, so this chain guide here is meant to move, right? This is where the tensioner down here pushes on the chain guide, holds it around about there or so, um, while the chain's going up. Now the only thing I can think of that's been making the noise is this. I'm not sure if that's meant to have that much play there. And that's flush up against the block, that bolt. Like it doesn't go anymore. So I'm kind of curious if uh, Maybe this was meant to have like a washer there to take up some of that space or something. Um, I don't know, but that's the only thing I can think of that's been causing that noise. Now, after going through everything with Okachan, we ended up just saying, he, like, he just ended up saying, bring the motor to me and we'll go over everything and we'll rebuild it and make sure everything's perfect. So. We might send the head off. I might get an APRIC head while I'm at it. I really do want to stick with this two liter platform. It felt super crazy good. And I want to make 500 horsepower and I want this thing to just be insane. Um, everything looks good. Rods, bearings, like I said, pistons look great. Everything looks really good. We know the tune was on the money. It was ready to be turned up. I mean, we got some boxes from our friends at GCG with some really nice E85 too. So like this thing was, Gonna be ready for the moon tune as they say, but yeah We'll figure it out. We'll work out what's going on. We'll get it all back together Okachan's gonna help out And we'll figure out what's going on But if it turns out it is this and it was just missing like a little uh, like wave washer or something on this to stop that That's insane cuz Like that's all it was probably honestly. That's the only thing I can think of now I uh, we're gonna go check on an SR at Okachan shop, but We'll compare it and see if it's meant to be like that. It's so frustrating, right? Like not getting closure on stuff like this. It is. But yeah, like we've looked over everything. Everything looks really, really good. We were a little bit concerned that maybe when uh, we had the wrong tail shaft, the wrong length tail shaft, that maybe um, that could have like pushed the input shaft into the crank and caused like, you know, the... Um, uh, what's it called? Something washer. Thrust could have caused the thrust washers or something to wear out and give the like the the motor a bunch of crank walk, but that seems to be all within spec. So another day, <laughs> another day working on cars. I'm gonna get some new guides. These look brown. I don't want brown guides on my engine. We're gonna get pink. No, they don't sell pink ones. But good initiative, Khan. Good initiative, Khan. You know what else is going to be pink though? What? What if I put this on the wrong way? I mean, obviously that's... No, it only goes on one way. Yeah. Don't worry, that's my stupid self. I swear there's meant to be like a wave washer or something there. Something. I don't know. We'll figure it out. It's got to be something simple. Imagine that. I've completely disassembled my engine and rebuilt it because of a simple little washer that could have been on this. I don't know. I'm ranting. Guys. I, I wish we could end on a happy note. I'm, I'm just confused and I have no closure. This just reminds me of a really bad relationship I had and how I felt when I had no idea why she left me. This is getting worse. Do you think it's rod knock? No, it's not. Everything we looked at is not rod knock. There's not a single bearing that has spun. There's no damage to any of the bearings. Um, I'll see if we can throw up the pictures of them, but there's no rod knock at all on this motor.
which just makes it even more confusing. <laughs> I wish it was right now, just so I knew what it was. Anyways, that is the solution we have right now. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, thank you so much. You guys are the OGs. You guys are the champions, the people that understand how much it means to me when you support the channel like that and watch a video all the way to the end. Um, now is also the time to remind you, if you want to follow me on other social medias like Instagram or Twitch or anything like that, do it. I'm making sure all my eggs are not in one basket in case an adpocalypse or something like that happens on YouTube. We want to make sure we're spread out on all the platforms and I'm really enjoying the live streams over on Twitch. So if you aren't following me over on Twitch and Instagram, I've been doing a lot of like uh, AMAs and live streams there as well. Make sure you do. Information is all down in the description and I will see you all in the next video, guys. Peace out. Ciao, Marta. Ha, 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 ha.